Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy and today we're gonna take a look at the settings to change immediately the moment you get yourself the Samsung Galaxy S24 series. Now because this one is running with Samsung One UI 6.1 and has a lot of Galaxy AI things and it's huge in terms of the display, the battery and the cameras, there'll be quite a few things that I'll show off in today's video that I haven't shown off in past videos. So let's first take a look inside of the display settings. Once you tap on settings, you're gonna scroll down, tap on display and this is where you can choose between light mode and dark mode. Now I would suggest dark mode just because it does save you battery life anywhere on a AMOLED display where it's black, it is not being illuminated at all at any of those LEDs. When you choose the light mode, there's gonna be a lot of illumination happening, again, consuming more battery life. So I do suggest moving it over into dark mode. Plus I just think it's easier to use on your eyes. Now, as you scroll on down, there is one thing that you see that is new, which is the adaptive color tone. So what this will do is it will actually adjust the colors and white balance based on ambient lighting conditions to make the colors appear more natural in different environments. So this may actually change the color tone if you were to walk outside versus if you're in the living room or a darker lit bedroom. So if you're seeing that some of the color tone is changing or it looks a little off, this one might actually be turned on. So this is up to you if you'd like to turn it on or off. For me, I like to see my phone just the way it is all the time, no matter which area or room or condition I'm in. So I'm going to keep this adaptive color tone turned off. And then scrolling down, you're going to see this option here for screen resolution. Now out of the box for the Galaxy S24 Plus and the S24 Ultra, it will be the Full HD Plus. I just suggest it moving over to the highest quality resolution, which is the Quad HD Plus option. Now, if you have the regular Galaxy S24, you will not have this feature right here. So you might as well just leave it as the Full HD Plus, which is the highest resolution that you have on the regular S24. So again, if you have the Plus or the Ultra, switch it to the Quad HD Plus. Now this one right here is the screen timeout. Originally out of the box, it's 30 seconds. I move it to two minutes just because if at any point in time I just walk away for just a second, you know, mixing around the mashed potatoes or mixing around the pasta or something, you walk away, you come right back, then this way you're still able to use the device. Plus also for me shooting YouTube, if 30 seconds was there, it would be timing out all the time. So you can switch your screen timeout to two minutes, but if you start moving to the five and the 10 minutes, then you'll actually start using some of that battery consumption that I was trying to save you from before. Now, next up will be the navigation bar options. And this one's a little bit more important than before. And that's because we have one of the Galaxy AI features, which is circle to search. Now it is okay if you're still using those navigation buttons, if that's how you'd like to navigate around your phone. All you have to do in order to use the circle to search is you press and hold on that home button. You're able to circle anything on the screen to get more details about it. So it doesn't matter which application you're in, you're able to search. And if you are curious about what happened to that assistant app, basically now you just swipe up from the bottom. You can swipe up from the left or from the right. You're basically making one third of a triangle. So basically just draw a third of a triangle and that's pretty much how you're able to open up your Google Assistant. Now here's the thing. If you're using swipe gestures, it's the exact same thing. Press and hold where the home button would be. Here's your circle to search and you're still good to go just like everybody else. And the same thing with the Google Assistant swipe up from the very bottom left or the bottom right. Now next up will be everything Galaxy AI. So there is actually a full entire settings page that you're able to take a look at to see where Galaxy AI is built in. And some of these you do need to turn on in order to use these features. So all I have to do is head inside of the settings, tap on advanced features. And then inside of here, you go to advanced intelligence. And this is where you have it all built in, which is your phone, the Samsung keyboard, interpreter, Samsung notes, voice recorder, Samsung internet, and photo editor. So you can actually go through all of these individually just to see what all of these are capable of doing. But some of the ones that I suggest to turn on will be the one for Samsung keyboard. So with this one, you're able to have a writing assistant with you any application that you're using, as long as you use the Samsung keyboard. And with this one, you can actually make sure that you turn on style and grammar. So again, some of these you do need to turn on to actually use these features. And so now you can actually change the tone of what you have written. It's a really fun way to change the style and the grammar of anything you're doing. If it's text messaging, if it's something with a social media application or a professional email. Now, after that, you might want to take a look and scroll down to Samsung Internet, just because this summarized tool is amazing. It moved me from using Google Chrome back into Samsung Internet. And again, you want to turn this one on because if you Google search something to do in a town or you just search for anything or you're just on any website, there is an option to just tap on summarize 
and it's able to look at the entire web page. Even the stuff that has to scroll down to the bottom of the page or some of the stuff that's left or right, it will summarize every single thing there for you. And again, something that's really nice and helpful to turn on. And then the last one will definitely be the photo editor because if you saw a lot of reviews and videos and tutorials about this device, you're able to completely edit a photo. You can move someone around, make them bigger, make them smaller, fill in gaps, do whatever you want to with backgrounds. That's actually being done with this one right here, which is called generative edit inside of your photo editor. So make sure you turn this one on because out of the box, this one was actually turned off. Now let's take a look inside of the camera settings. So with camera, what I did was I made sure that I left it on 12 megapixel because this is where you have all of your features. This is where you have all of your zooms. If you start switching over into 50 megapixel or 200 megapixel, you're going to start losing features. So what I would suggest is use your 12 megapixel so you have everything there. The moment you know for a fact you want to take a really great, dramatic, amazing, detailed shot, then move it over into 50 and 200 100 megapixel, but at the very beginning, just leave it at 12. Now, next up, you might want to take a look inside of video. So for video, you might want to have a little bit better quality of a recording. You have the Galaxy S24 or the S24 Plus or the S24 Ultra, which has really great cameras. So originally out of the box, you are full HD at 30 frames per second. You might as well at least move it to the Ultra HD 60 frames per second. Again, with video, you're going to have all of your features and zooms. If you move up to the 8K, there will be some things that you lose, but if you want to shoot something at 8K, do it at that moment in time, so then you can get it at that moment with those details. But I would suggest as a normal stock video settings, go to Ultra HD 60 frames per second. Now the other thing that I want to show you is maybe you want to even go higher than that. Now this is where you tap on more. So from here, this is where you can actually move some of these down into your main settings or your main modes, rather than always moving to the right hand side of all of them sitting in one spot. So if you want to bring any of these on down, such as pro video, then you can just basically press and hold, swipe it down, and then you tap on save. Because inside of pro video, one of the things you might want to take a look at is right here. You can see I'm ultra HD 120 frames per second. Originally out of the box, if you remember, Full HD 30, we moved it to Ultra HD 60 because we didn't have the option of 120. So this is where, if you would like to, you can go inside of your Pro Video and then you can have Ultra HD 120. Now, if you do 8K, you're going to have 24 frames per second and 30. So again, from what I would suggest, Ultra HD 120 is super smooth, really cool, high frame rate that you're able to do. And this is all found right here inside of Pro Video. So that's two things. Bring down the modes that you would like to use. And then inside of Pro Video, switch it to Ultra HD 120 frames per second. Now for this next step, move it over into Photo. And the reason being is because now we're going to go into these settings right here on the top left. And when you go to photo, you're going to have every single thing illuminated. Nothing is grayed out. As example, let's say that you move over into video, you hit on settings. It's going to take you to the video stuff. Some of the other camera things will be grayed out. If you go to another one, such as pro video, or you go to dual record, you hit settings. Some of the other stuff is also again, going to be grayed out. So make sure you go inside of photo inside of photo. This is where now you can change any Thing and everything because now everything is at default for you to make changes. So with this one, you can take a look at intelligent optimization. When it comes down to the quality optimization of your photos, just keep it at maximum. You have the best camera on the market. You might as well have the maximum results when it comes down to the quality. You don't need to speed up any captures or take pictures as fast as possible. Just leave it inside of medium. And then as you scroll on down, you see advanced picture options. Now for me, I am not using the HEIF. The only reason is because when you use this high efficiency picture stuff, the photos that are done in high efficiency pictures, some applications and some websites does not support these photos. I wanna have full capability of all of the photos that I take. And because these have a incredible amount of internal storage on them, you might as well, again, also not limit yourself with what you wanna do with those photos. So the high efficiency pictures is turned off. Also make sure this is off right here too, because when you take a selfie, the way that you preview it, everything is backwards. So you don't want to save it as it's being previewed. So make sure you have this one turned off as well. 
Now, same thing with the photos, you can do it with your videos for the advanced video options. Out of the box, you actually have the HEVC turned on. You can prioritize video quality or prioritize the saving space. But here's the thing. I use the H.264 because this is the most compatible video files. Again, I want to do anything and everything I want with everything I record. And if you use one of these high efficiency things, it looks great and works great on your device, but not with every application or website. So out of the box, this one does actually use HEVC. So I switched mine to the H264. And then lastly, on this page, as you scroll down, you're gonna find the option here for camera assistant. If you don't see camera assistant, this is actually something that you can download from GoodLock, but it should actually show up automatically on your device. This is where you can add in additional zoom shortcuts. If you remembered with my zooms, I had 0.6, 1, 3, 5, and 10. I can actually now add in the 2X and the 100X. So if I add in both of these, Let's say that we move right back over into the camera. You can see everything gets added in if you want to have, you know, more of the zoom options. But again, that's up to you. Depends on how much you want to see on your screen. You know, maybe you do like the 2X. So I will actually keep the 2X, but not the 100. So that is one of the settings you can change. You also have auto lens switching. Some people like this. Some people dislike this. That means that you're trying to take a photo of something really close. You might be getting close to an object over here and it might actually switch the lens as you're trying to take a picture and it's actually trying to go to a better lens than what you're use than you're what you're using to get a better angle or better focus so this one you can either turn on or off it's something that's more of your personal preference on um, if you're trying to take pictures and it's switching when you don't want it to then you want to turn it off if you appreciate the auto lens switching then you just want to make sure you keep this one on and the rest you don't even really need to touch i pretty much kept everything on that was on um, you know, you prioritize focus over speed, video recording in photo mode, you press and hold on the shutter button. Uh, you also have some of these options down here as well too, but a couple of the big ones would be auto lens switching and some of the additional zoom shortcuts. So now that we talked a little bit about Galaxy AI, now let's talk a little bit about your Samsung keyboard and the setup of the icons. Because once you open up your Samsung keyboard, no matter which application, especially this icon is now going to pop up, but it may be somewhere else that is not really easy to touch with your thumb. So you wanna have really good access to it. So I made sure that I put my emojis on the top left. I have my, my writing assistant on the top right-hand side. And then these are the three that I would use sometimes on a daily basis but I made sure that I moved down the ones that I don't really use at all, not even on a monthly basis. So once you move all of those ones down, you have everything up over here where you want them to be. Again, you just press and hold on these icons. You can move them around in the order you want. So emojis, super easy to tap, and my writing assistant, super easy to use. So from here, if I just say, you know, hey, uh, you know, yo, what's up? Now from here, what I can do is I can go right on back and I can tap right there, which is my writing assistant, and I can change either the spelling, take a look at my grammar, or even change the writing style. So for this one, it's gonna give you professional, casual, social, polite, emojify. There's several different options that you can use right here. And again, like I said, it doesn't matter if you're in text messaging, if you're inside of a social media app or a professional email, you're able to change the entire thing. So if I wrote an entire paragraph, not just a three little sentence, if you wrote an entire paragraph up here, you, ta you tapped on the writing assist, this is where you're able to get the help to make it look even better. Now next up will be your battery protection. So this was something that I found back in Samsung Winnie Y 6.0, but you weren't able to use it until 6.1. And I've been trying to test it and trying to use it. So I actually did turn this thing on. So for battery protect, all you got to do is go inside of your settings, tap on battery. And then right here is where you have that option right there for battery protection. So there's three different options. So first off, basic is basically whenever your battery is charged to 100%, the charging will stop until the battery level drops back down to 95, then start charging back up again to 100. Now, the maximum battery protection is where your battery will stop charging when it reaches 80%. So basically, this is for those people who is charging their phones overnight, every single night for the full year, two, three years they own the phone. It's going to start actually hurting their battery. The moment you're at 100% and you're still charging it, it's still plugged in. It'll actually hurt the lifespan of your device. So they actually have an option here called adaptive. So it'll actually use maximum and basic to get you through the night. So it'll use maximum while you're asleep. So it'll only charge up to 80% 
and then switch to basic, which is to get you up to 100% before you wake up. So sleep time is estimated based on your phone usage patterns. So for a full entire week, if you go into bed charging it in, it's probably going to use basic the entire time. It's learning when you actually pick up your phone to actually get up versus even your alarm. So if you start waking up at 7.15, that means around 7 o'clock, it's going to start trying to get you from that 80% up to 100 so make sure you go inside of your battery protection and turn on adaptive. Now, since we talked about the battery, now let's move over into the performance. So what you could do is head inside of your settings. You're going to scroll down and take a look at your device care. So inside of device care, this is where you have underneath performance, you have performance profile and auto optimization. So for performance profile, my option that I chose here is light. So it prioritizes battery life and cooling efficiency over processing speed. Now, if you want to use standard, maybe you're somebody who is doing multitasking all day, every day in high performance gaming, then you can choose the option of provides recommended balance between processing speed, battery life, and cooling efficiency. Now, for me, I have really good battery life. It is almost 8 p.m. I'm still at 80%, and I use this phone all day. I've actually had this thing with Google Maps most of the day. There is a few games I've been playing the whole time. I do play with the camera, take pictures and videos. So, so far, in terms of my option for the light performance profile and using dark mode and quite a few other things which I'll share with you um, I'm still getting a really good battery life again 8 p.m. still at 50 percent now next up will be auto optimization and this actually happened today for me so with auto optimization you have to make sure that you restart your phone at least once a week so with this one I chose the option for Sunday at 3 p.m. If you want, you can even do a Wednesday. You could do a Saturday and a Sunday. You could do it however many times you want. I wouldn't suggest doing it every single day, maybe once or twice a week. For me, I find it to be successful on a Sunday. I chose 3 a.m. for this to be done. All it does is restart my phone. It just turns it off, turns it right back on. And then that is when the moment or the morning that you wake up, where you have to retype in your password to get into your phone and not just your fingerprint reader because it did do a restart to kind of refresh your device. Now this next one you may not think about, but it's gonna be a color palette. So a color palette is actually pretty nice and, and helpful and beneficial to use, especially when you take a look all, at all of your quick settings right here. So when you take a look at this one, when it was out of the box and you swipe down, everything was white. So this one is okay, you know, maybe you might like this color option there, but for me, I went through and I found a color palette Palette that made it easier for me to kind of read all the different settings and a couple different colors to kind of interact with your device. So all you have to do is press and hold anywhere on the screen that is empty. You tap on wallpaper and style and you just tap on color palette. Now through here, you just turn this on and then you're able to choose which palette you kind of would like to, you know, kind of see if you want some pinks or if you want your greens. If you swipe over, all of these here are all based on the wallpaper that you're using. So if you change your wallpaper, you're going to have different colors than me. Or you can actually base it on basic colors. You can go through here. You can have a color tone of maybe two different colors. So if you want it to have you know, a couple different options of colors right here, what might look good together. Or you could do a basic color if you want a lot of it to kind of be whatever you choose from. Again, or you can base it off of your wallpaper, and this is the one that I usually use right here. So I, again, suggest based off of something that could be just very plain and boring is going to be using a color palette, especially when you're using not only just the quick settings, but your phone and other applications. Now, next up will be the sound of your Galaxy S24 series, and not only just the sound of the phone itself, but also if you're connected to Bluetooth. Now, Samsung did improve the sound quality of the S24 series over the S23. Don't know why they never wanted to share the fact that they made it louder and a more full sound, but they actually did. So you wanna make sure you take advantage of the improvement of sound. So you go inside of your settings, tap on sound, now inside of here, scroll down, tap on sound quality and effects, and this will change the sound quality of not only the phone itself, but also if you're connected to a Bluetooth headset. So right here, out of the box, this equalizer is set as normal. Auto, Dolby Atmos is turned off, so you just wanna make sure you turn this thing on. You wanna change your equalizer maybe to rock, just to get a little bit more you know, change and more, more full of a sound. Um, and inside of here, you can switch it to either auto, movie, music, or voice. I'm gonna keep mine on auto. But Dolby Atmos, and when you actually make this change, it does make a pretty big difference on the phone and Bluetooth sound. Now moving over into the lock screen. So this is something that's brand new with Samsung One UI 6.1, and that is these two widgets right here. 
So originally, if you tap on the on the clock or the time, you have all of these different widgets that's underneath it right there. So this one was already there, part of the older versions of Samsung One UI. But the thing that's new is the actual widgets on the lock screen itself. So how you're able to make any changes here is you press and hold anywhere that's empty. You want to unlock it. And then this is where you can make some changes. You can actually make changes to your home screen and your lock screen. So you have a little button icon down here in the very bottom. And this section here, you can't really change the size of it or you can't move it around or anything. You know, you can actually go up here and you can change the size and the and the position of the clock and you know all the good stuff and when you move everything around everything else moves with it as well uh, so once you basically put your clock where you want it to be but you can tap here and you can either delete these by tapping on the negatives or this is where you actually add them in so you have a couple things or a couple widgets for your battery you have a few things with your calendar clock reminder samsung health and weather so the ones that i'm using here is going to be basically my samsung health this little chart right there is sitting there and then i also have my battery widget on the top so this way i can see not only my phone but also my watch or anything i'm connected to such as you know maybe my galaxy buds so it's pretty nice that now you have a widget specifically on your lock screen that you can actually look at, interact with. You can also tap on them, unlock, and then you can look at that application. So it's pretty cool, again, that it is sitting right there on the lock screen, right there, you know, physically visible, so you don't have to actually tap on the time to get into those other widgets. Now let's talk about notification settings because this was a change with Samsung One UI 6.1 from the 6.0. And what you were able to do from beforehand was you were able to, let's say, take a look at Instagram or Facebook or something, and you have different types of notifications coming from those applications. Now it was turned off on One UI 6.1. So how you're able to turn this one right back on is once you go inside of your settings, you're gonna scroll down and take a look at notifications. Now inside of notifications, you now wanna tap on advanced settings, scroll down and turn this on. So out of the box, this is turned off and you don't have the categories of notifications per each app like you used to have on 6.0. So once you turn this on, you go back a page and so now when you're inside of your notifications settings, you go to app notifications and this is where you have all those categories you know, added right back in. So again, let's say that we scroll on down, we take a look at Instagram, and then you take a look at the notifications categories. This is where you have all these different categories. So if you don't want to have any of the notifications for sh you know shopping drops, support requests, you know if you don't want to get notifications for your view counts or if your your uploads, uh, if you have people who mention stuff or likes likes and comments on photos first posts and stories, friends on Instagram, if you don't you know, need those things. So you can see all these different categories and all these different notifications that may pop through. You can actually go through now these notification categories that again, was already there in 6.0, but you had to do this one setting change right here inside of the advanced settings to actually turn them on. If you don't have them on, you don't have those categories. Now let's talk about the S Pen settings. So if you have the Ultra, you have the S Pen that is built in. All you gotta do is scroll down, take a look at the advanced features and tap on S Pen. So inside of S Pen, I don't have or even use Air Actions. Air Actions is something that you can play with if you want to. It's a little gimmicky. It's one of those things where you can just move your little S Pen in the air, press the buttons. You can change songs, play songs, pause songs or videos, scroll in or zoom in on photos, take pictures. The only thing I would probably use it for would be to take a photo with the S Pen. But other than that, I don't use it too much. But this is where you have air command. This is where you can change how you want it to look. If you want it to be standard where it's larger, it actually writtens out and writes out all of the application names. You have compact. If you want it very small, you know exactly what is over there. Because right here, this is where you have your shortcuts. So this is where you can add in, you can delete, you can change. You can see that I have a couple third-party applications over here that wouldn't normally be sitting there. I think Penup would be one that would be sitting there. So if at any point that you want to add in any application from your phone, you can actually add it into your Air Command. So now once you set up all of your shortcuts for Air Command, you might want to go back a couple pages and then there's a few additional settings you might want to look at. First off is what happens when you pull out the S Pen. So for me, I have mine set up to do nothing because the moment I pull my S Pen out, I might be using it for something, drawing on the screen that I'm actually on. I don't need to have a note option to kind of pop up. I don't need my Air Command to open every single time. If you love Air Command and you know that you pull the S Pen out to use something over here with Air Command, you can keep it open. 
For me, I pull it out so much that I don't need to have anything happen, and I'm just going to start using it right then and there without anything popping up. And then you also have options for screen off memos and quick notes. Screen off memos means when the screen is off, you know, it's basically powered down. When you pull the S Pen out, it's going to pop up a little black screen for you to start jotting down notes. So you can either have that on or off. And then you also have quick notes. So quick notes is one that I would suggest just to keep on because all you got to do is press and hold the S Pen button, double tap the screen, and you're going to have a small little note pop up. So this way you'd be able to start taking notes immediately. So this way you don't have to try to open up another note application. Again, press and hold the S Pen button, double tap the screen, and your quick notes will pop up. So we just got done talking about the S Pen, but I do also want to talk about Labs. So inside of Samsung Labs, there is a brand new thing, a part of Samsung One UI 6.1, and that is right here, Photo Ambient Wallpaper. So out of the box, this one is turned off, but if you turn it on, it'll actually kind of have AI built in to change the way your wallpaper looks. So Photo Ambient Wallpaper uses an advanced intelligence to change your own photo based on the time and weather. So this is pretty fun. You can go through and actually turn it on inside of Galaxy Labs. And since we were here already, let's also talk about the side button. Because the side button, usually most people like to have it for the power off menu. But if you press and hold on your side key button, it's gonna open up I your Bixby. That. So some people may not use Bixby. So this is a way that it does wake it up. So this is where you have the option for power off menu. Now here's the thing. If you don't wanna go inside of your advanced features, I was already here with S Pen and Labs side button was just sitting right there. If you wanna make this change a little bit easier and quicker, pull down twice, tap on the little power icon, side button settings, and that's how you can get inside. So this is where I would normally show it off. Again, power menu, side key button, you know, settings. This is where you can choose now, power off menu. And you also have the option for double press. So if you double press this button, it'll open up the camera out of the box, which I think is probably one of the better options, but you can switch it. So if you want it to open a different application, you choose open app, you go to settings, you choose what you want it to do. Right here, I have the second option of flashlight. So if I double press this button, flashlight turns on and I'm able to see in the dark, but I'm gonna leave it as the quick launch camera and I want to keep my press and hold of the side key to be the power off menu. So now when I do this, it's going to show what most people would usually like to see. Now let's talk about the edge panels because edge panels, you can see it's just sitting right here. There's a lot of really cool features inside of it. If you don't see it there for some reason, just go inside your settings, go inside of display and inside of display. This is where you have edge panels. So this is where you might want to turn it on. This is where you can actually choose which panels is showing up. Out of the box, I believe it's only just apps and that's it. So I threw on the option for tasks, keyboard, and smart select. Smart select is one that I use all the time to just take a picture of whatever I see on the screen really quick, but I don't need the whole entire thing. I just basically pull this open, tap on rectangle. I move this right here, wherever I want it to be. Um, it'll even show me if it's a one by one, if it's a four by three, five by three, it's gonna show me where the edge of my finger is so I can see that I'm on this application here. Uh, and then it's where I can actually just pull something from the screen right there. So I would say smart select is a big one. You can even change your handle the way that it looks. I changed my transparency almost super high. I kept it right there for white. You can even change the color of it. You can bring it up, you can bring it down. You can move it to the left position, to the right. You can even lock it. So when you're on your main home screens, you don't change it. This is where you could change not only the transparency, but the size. So I, has it, so I have it pretty small. Also have it super thin. You don't need it to be thick and, and you know, pushing all the way out. You just basically swipe it open, you know, right here to get it used. So those are really the couple different settings to change when it comes down to your edge panels. Now, next up will be the security and privacy. So let's just say that you went through, you added in your fingerprint and you also added in your face recognition, but you might've not noticed some of those settings that were actually there when you set them up. So as you scrolled on down and you went through and you put in your face recognition, your fingerprints, well, if you go inside of security and privacy, you tap on this option there, scroll down. This is where you have additional security settings for your biometrics. So for your biometrics, if you want to make a quick little change with your face recognition, you tap there. I'm going to put in my code. And what's inside of here, this is the settings for face recognition. So I have face unlock turned on. I turned this one off because it originally stated that it would stay on the lock screen until I swipe it which makes no sense at all. If it noticed your face still stayed on the lock screen, I would rather it just be really quick. I look at the phone, it's unlocked and I'm in. 
So I turn this off here because I don't want it to stay on the lock screen until I swipe it. And I turned off Brighten Screen. So these are the two things to turn off when you turn on your face recognition. I would suggest just keeping this one here turned on, which is Require Open Eyes. Brighten Screen is very nice, but then it gets annoying when you're laying in bed with the spouse or you're maybe at a movie theater and it brightens the screen so bright that it's a little bit more annoying. In those very, very dark, low lit situations, you might as well just use your fingerprint or your pen. Uh, face recognition does work sometimes in low lit conditions, um, but other than that, uh, these are the two that I would suggest to turn off. Now let's take a look inside of the fingerprint settings. So with this one here, there is one setting that I changed, which is show animation when unlocking. So if you love those animations and you love animations taking you a little bit longer to get from screen to screen and get to where you're going to make it look pretty, you can keep it on. For me, I'm not a big animation guy. I'd rather just unlock the phone and get in and go. So this one I did turn off. So there is the option here where you have show animations when unlocking. You also have this option here. So basically, when do you want to show the icon of the fingerprint icon? So do you want it to always show? Do you want to tap and then show the little fingerprint icon or never? Uh, fingerprint always on. I just keep this one on because once I pull the phone out of my pocket, I hit where my fingerprint would go. I unlocked my phone even with the screen off. So even though it does take a little bit of battery life because it's always running and fingerprint is always on ready to go, um, it doesn't make a big enough difference for me to actually turn this one off. Now, lastly, let's talk about Samsung account. So once you go inside of your settings, you tap on Samsung account. This is one of those things that you should have done when you first set up your phone. Samsung account is just as important or more important than your Gmail, because this is where you can have all of your devices all synced up. You can also have all these features and applications working together, your Samsung cloud, advanced intelligence, galaxy sharing, Samsung pass. So you have a bunch of things saved, all your passwords and such. You also have Samsung find, Samsung apps and services, all of the linked accounts. So when it comes down to even with your Samsung find, so let's say that we scrolled on down to, let's say security and privacy, lost device protection, because if you don't have a Samsung account, you can't find your phone if it's lost. And also you can't unlock your phone if you forgot all of your login credentials. Also, if you lost it, you can lock it from a computer. You just basically go to the like Samsung Finds website. This is where you can basically unlock it. You can ring it, you can lock it. You can do so many different things. You can even have this phone find other devices such as Galaxy Buds and Galaxy Watches if they're within the vicinity. So Samsung account is very important. So is Find My Mobile. So that is all of the settings and all of the features that you definitely want to change, turn on, or, or whatever the moment you get yourself the Galaxy S24 series. Hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.